Welcome back to the ultimate guide to shutter speed. I'm David Molnar, your photography mentor. And in this lesson, we're gonna be talking about how shutter speed works in real time. I'll be doing a practical demonstration where you can look over my shoulder and figure out shutter speed in real time. Hey folks, David Molnar here, your photography mentor. In this lesson, I wanna show you how shutter speed actually works. I wanna show you how to freeze motion and how to allow motion blur in your images with a longer exposure. So the first thing we're gonna do is move it off of automatic mode to shutter priority. On the Canon camera, this is the camera I'm demonstrating this with, um, it's a Canon Rebel T6i. And on the Canon cameras, TV, is um, the acronym for time value, but it is the shutter priority mode. And what that means is that your camera is gonna automatically set everything but the shutter speed. You get to choose what the shutter speed, what the duration of time is that you'll be actually taking the picture. You get to choose that, whether it's long, medium, or fast, okay? And uh, the camera is gonna automatically set the aperture for you and if you have the ISO set to auto ISO it will automatically set that for you as well. When you're using a mode like shutter priority I do recommend you use auto ISO because the reason to use shutter priority is simply so that you don't have to think about those other factors to controlling the exposure or the brightness of an image. So if you want to check and make sure you're in auto ISO you can press the ISO button here and make sure you're on auto. Push set and then you're all set. All right, so right now, right here, we're in TV, time value, shutter, priority mode, and you see that we are at one-tenth of a second. Or a, if you were to divide a second into 10 parts, we're at one of those parts, one-tenth of a second, which is a pretty long duration of time. Remember, 60th of a second is the longest duration of time that you should hold a camera still. Anything longer than a 60th of a second you wanna put it on a tripod just like we have it here. So we're okay to shoot it a 10th of a second because we are locked down on a tripod. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna to turn to live view mode. We've got this fan buzzing in the background if you didn't notice that yet. And what I wanna to, want to do is show you how with this longer exposure, this longer shutter speed, this longer amount of time that we're gonna be taking this picture, we're actually gonna be seeing that, mo you can see it in the picture here, but we'll sh I'll show you take the picture and you can actually see the motion blur of the fan. Like you don't actually see the blades of the fan whatsoever. But as we create the shutter speed, as we make the shutter speed faster and faster, you're gonna start seeing the blades of the fan kind of becoming more and more crisp. So how do we do that? Well, remember, shutter speed is just kind of like a speeding car. The higher that number, the faster we're shooting and the more likely we are to freeze motion. So let's go ahead and make a jump to a 60th of a second, which is the longest amount of time that you should handhold a camera, just like I said before. All right, so here's, it looks virtually the same. Let's toggle back between that picture and the one at 10th of a second. It really doesn't look much different at all. We haven't really frozen the motion much at all. So I'm gonna now go to 200th of a second, all right? And you can actually see that we can start, we actually have isolated the fan blades there, you, you can actually see that there is one, two, three, four, five fan blades, but they're not crisp yet. They're still a little bit fuzzy, a little bit blurry. So what we're gonna do is make our shutter speed faster to, let's say, 500th of a second. And now you can see that they're a little bit more crisp. Not quite crisp yet, but they are getting more crisp as we increase our shutter speed. So I'm gonna go to a thousandth of a second. Remember, the camera's automatically calculating um, the aperture and the ISO for me, so I don't have to think about it. All I'm doing is setting the shutter speed and the camera's doing the rest. It's a beautiful thing about shutter priority mode. I'm gonna take a picture at a thousandth of a second. Blades are still not crisp yet. Well, let's go further. We've got some room, I think. I'm gonna go to two thousandth of a second. And now those blades are getting really close. So what's happening here is I don't know if you noticed that, but the image just got a little bit darker, okay? That's because we're maxing out our ability to let more light in. So as we increase the shutter speed beyond this point, 
it's gonna start getting darker in the image, but we might be able to freeze the motion. So we'll try that uh, first, but just understand there are limitations in photography. If you try to you know, uh, push it too far, your image might be dark. So this is a give and take thing. All right, so let's go to um, 3200th of a second. This is fast, okay? And we we've, we've have our um, fan blades almost completely frozen, but the image is getting a little bit darker. Let's go, let's see, I think we might max out on this camera at 4,000. Yeah, 4,000th 4, of a second is the max um, shutter speed that this camera can do. So we'll go ahead and do that. And it looks like we've gotten that, those um, fan blades pretty much frozen. That's pretty much as good as we're gonna get on this camera. There are other cameras that will shoot up to 8,000th of a second. And so maybe that would do an even better job. These fan blades are going really, really fast, but you're definitely gonna be able to capture sports and uh, kids running and all sorts of motion. You're gonna be able to freeze that motion at 4,000th of a second. A fan is just really, really fast. So that's how you freeze motion and allow motion blur. A longer exposure or a longer shutter speed or a slower shutter speed or just a lower number, right? I'm gonna, we're at 4,000, so it's like we're speeding really fast. A longer number, a smaller number, like 10th or even up to a second. I'll go to a second here. Now we're at a second, is going to allow that motion blur, right? And you can see the motion blur there. And when we speed all the way up to, let's say, 2,000th of a second or 2,500th of a second, it's going to come really close to freezing that motion. All right, hope you enjoyed that practical demonstration. I'm really excited because in the next lesson, we're gonna be talking about why and how to do long exposures, all right? We're gonna be talking about flowing waterfalls, night sky photography, and motion blur. It's gonna be awesome. I will see you there.